The 65th Ash Annual Meeting and Exposition is officially underway as thousands of hematologists gather in San Diego to conquer blood diseases worldwide. You're watching Ash News TV. What better way to kick off our coverage of the annual meeting than with Ash President Dr. Robert Brodsky. Dr. Brodsky, this is expected to be a very busy and exciting week for the hematology community. What are you most looking forward to? Uh, well, this is this is just the capstone of our, our, our year. I mean, turns out that this is the largest ASH meeting ever. We are probably going to get close to 32,000 in-person registrants, which is an ASH record. And we have another five or 6,000 that are joining virtual. So total, it's the biggest. We set the record by more than a thousand abstracts, the most abstracts ever submitted to the ASH meeting from over 80 countries. And the, the most importantly, the quality of the science is spectacular. And this is going directly to our patients, which is really why we're all here. Speaking of patients, ASH has been a leader in advocating for both treatment and access to treatment and care for individuals living with sickle cell disease. And the FDA recently just announced two groundbreaking gene therapy treatments for those patients. What does that mean for them? Yeah, this is such an exciting time for sickle cell disease because we can really talk about curative therapies now. So in addition, to these two exciting new therapies, at the late-breaking abstract, there has been advances in bone marrow transplant that now almost everyone has a donor for bone marrow transplant and can be cured that way too. So we have three potentially curative options for sickle cell disease. Now these are expensive therapies and ASH has done a lot with advocacy and working to make sure that patients are gonna have these therapies available. And we have a lot of challenges with these. I mean, these, this is a great challenge to have because we have to figure out how to sequence these, which therapies are best for the best patient, um, long-term outcomes of these uh, uh, trials. It's, it's really an exciting time, but brings a lot of challenges, but these are challenges we want to have. And what are you most proud of to be able to experience at this meeting as president of ASH? Um, I, I just love the whole environment. I, I think that, as, as I said earlier, the, the big reason we're here are for our patients, for our trainees. They learn so much at this meeting. ASH is such a global society. It has, a, has an impact really around the world. And the advances that we've seen over the years, you and I have been doing interviews like this for, and, and every year, it just amazes me that there's another three, five, six, seven diseases that have, have been life-changing. It has been yeah. life-changing. I feel the exact same way. Yeah. We are constantly talking about groundbreaking treatments that have been developed and with within this incredible community. So lots to see, lots to do. Thank you very much for your leadership, Dr. Brodsky. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. from the Blood Journals as Ash recently announced the launch of two new journals with another Blood Global Hematology on the way. Let's check in with Ash News TV's Michael Lyons who is joined by two incoming editors for more. And I'm here with Dr. Keith McRae and Dr. Jonathan Licht who are the two new editors of the Blood Journals. And Dr. McRae, uh, you are the editor-in-chief of the new journal Blood Vessels Thrombosis Hemostasis, or affectionately known as Blood VTH, which is going to serve the community of thrombosis and hemostasis. So what, as you look ahead over the next few years, what do you hope that that new journal is going to accomplish? Really, it's going to be a presence for ASH, really as a leader in this field. We hope to become a real top-notch journal, international reputation, 
Uh, people will be very proud to have their pet work published here. Uh, we want it to be all-encompassing, covering all of this broad field of blood vessels, platelets, endothelial cells, and, uh, and a home for, for all of those in ASH who are interested in these areas. Excellent. And Dr. Licht, uh, you are the founding editor-in-chief of Blood Neoplasia. So what is your vision that's going to set you apart? Well, uh, thank you very much. The whole field of oncology really was uh, got its origins from the study of blood cancers. We think there's a lot of great work out there across the world with the development of targeted therapies, new immune therapies. We'd like to have that work be in our journal, clinical, basic, translational, the whole gamut, and to take have the American Society of Hematology take a leading role in, in cancer research through its role in blood cancer research. So both of you are going to be speaking at separate sessions at the Blood Journal studio, which is in Poster Hall. Uh, what are you hoping uh, the audience will take away from that session? Well, I still think we need to spread the word that these are new journals and that we are here and uh, that we are looking for their papers, we're looking for their involvement, we're not only looking for their work, but we're looking for their help in reviewing papers and working with us and, and being part of this whole new journal. Dr. Licht, anything to add to that? I want to emphasize we are journals uh, for hematologists by hematologists. So we really are very excited about these new, uh, these two new journals and look forward to uh, sharing our message with the rest of the membership of the American Society of Hematology. Well, thank you doctors for sharing this information and congratulations on the launch of these two new journals. We wish you much success with them. You're looking at Ashapalooza, a day full of festivities that encapsulates microlearning, mentorship, career development, networking, and more. Well, I'm a third year medical student. Um, the reason why they kind of wanted a position for medical students or someone and like earlier on in training is to kind of get a sense for what we're looking for in choosing a career. I would say, not to speak on behalf of all medical students, of course it's different for each person, but I would say that on a very basic level, we're just trying to figure out what field we want to go into. Like, there's so many fields of medicine. We rotate through many of them, get a sense of what each one is about. And so really, this is the time to decide, like, what do we see ourselves doing in the next five, 10 years? For me, my path to Hemonc uh, kind of came through research that I got involved in. So being on, you know, the trainee council and getting to be a part of Ash in a more intimate way has really allowed me to kind of continue to give back to the community that kind of got me into it in the first place. Joining me now is Chair of the Trainee Council, Dr. Maya Abdallah. Now, Dr. Abdallah, tell us what makes Ashapalooza so important to this community. Um, hi, so um, Ashapalooza is really a wonderful opportunity for trainees to connect with other trainees, to meet with mentors in the field, and to really kind of experience hematology in a fun um, environment where we can all work together, learn together, and form hopefully long-lasting connections. What can we expect? We're looking ahead to 2024, right? So what's on the horizon for uh, the trainee council? Yeah, so the Training Council has expanded in the recent year and we've um, expanded to include more positions ranging from medical students um, all the way to post-grads and graduate students and an international member. And our goal is really to represent trainees from everywhere and to have voices heard from trainees everywhere. Um, for Ashapalooza 2024, we hope to see every trainee, every person interested in hematology, and we would love for you to shout out and let all your trainees know uh, that this is the place for trainees to be, um, and it's really a great way to kick off the meeting and to, to experience the meeting in a different way as a trainee. 
Awesome. And as you can see behind us, some of the Ash mascots are making their way through. So this is clearly a very fun, welcoming event for trainees. So the importance of that, having a setting like this where it's a little bit more casual, but the important work is being done. Yeah, so that's an excellent point. It's not just about the science, but about forming a community with fellow hematology trainees. Um, and as corny as it sounds, we are the future of hematology and forming these bonds and learning kind of how to work together and doing it all in a fun and laid back environment um, is really kind of probably the best way to spend the Friday before your ash um, this year and every year. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Abdallah. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Now, we also got to hear from Dr. Hetty Caraway on a little bit more about Ashapalooza. Ashapalooza is really just a phenomenal opportunity for anybody that's interested in hematologic uh, disorders and hematologic malignancy to come and be inspired and learn about what this, uh, has, this field has to offer. We have fantastic faculty, physicians that work in this space to teach us about how do I start a research project? How do I begin to learn in this space? What opportunities for education are there? Curricula, where do I find a mentor? How do I learn uh, in this space optimally? And also just to be inspired by the ongoing research and the things that are happening and also being presented at ASH proper. So really it's a space for trainees, medical students, residents, interns to come and network and to share in the joy of hematology. For a full schedule of other trainee activities and services, please head over to the link on your screen. Tipsovo Ivocidinib Tablets is a once daily oral therapy for the treatment of adult patients with acute myeloid leukemia or AML who have a susceptible IDH1 mutation. Patients treated with Tipsovo have experienced symptoms of differentiation syndrome, which can be fatal. QTC interval prolongation and Guillain-Barre syndrome can also develop in patients treated with Tipsovo. Please review all important safety information below and see full prescribing information, including boxed warning for AML patients at tipsovopro.com AML. For newly diagnosed patients with AML who are ineligible for induction chemotherapy, Tipsovo delivers a laser-focused solution. Tipsovo plus azacitidine delivers 24 months median overall survival versus 7.9 months with azacitidine alone. That's a threefold improvement over azacitidine alone and a 56% reduction in the risk of death. Tipsovo, laser focused on survival. Ash Central in the Sales Pavilion is the hub for networking, collaborating, and on-site amenities, including the Wellness Studio. For the past few years, clinical well-being has become an important focus at the annual meeting. The Ash Wellness Studio is where hematologists can engage in 10-minute microbursts of education throughout the day. Also in Ash Central is the Ash Store, where you'll find a variety of products to aid hematologists in their professional development. Educational products like the Ash Self-Assessment Program, a collection of the top How I Treat articles from blood, Hematology 2023, the ASH Education Program, and ASH Annual Meeting Webcasts. These products are all available at a special on-site discount rate. A new product being offered this year is the thought-provoking card game, Conversations for Change. This exciting and interactive tool is designed to empower teams to have conversations about DEI issues that hematologists often face. Conversations for Change is a deck of over 100 conversational prompt cards and is meant to elicit discussion and work to define terms, navigate situations, and inspire reflection. A limited number of copies are available for purchase at the Ash Store and Ash Booth. Get your deck now.
We are celebrating 20 years of both the Minority Recruitment Initiative and the Clinical Research Training Institute. For the past two decades, the MRI has helped to increase participation of underrepresented minorities training in hematology-related fields, while the CRTI has prepared countless fellows and junior faculty for careers in clinical hematology research. Past faculty and participants in both of these key ASH initiatives share their stories with the ASH Executive Committee at a celebration of these important milestones. You can change the legacy of individuals, and if we really want to be committed to diversifying our industry, to reaching minority patients, we need to support these types of programs and that they will be successful. They have created a framework for success that I think other societies should emulate. The next 20 years, I'd really like to see us dismantling structural and institutional racism that we have built into all of our programming. I think we need to be more aware, more cognizant, and actively advocating for advocacy and lobbying for policy change to really impact the care of our patients in heme and really support the education of future hematologists. Both programs are supported in large part by the ASH Foundation and play a tremendous role in cultivating careers, a message leaders from CRTI and MRI want donors to know. The opportunity to engage and to participate and have access to mentors that will help them from both a research standpoint as well as their career development is so crucial just in the long term for them remaining in academic medicine. I also think that two of the big points or one of the actually big points that were brought up by the panelists is that retention factor. So we heard about people that came as medical students and are still as faculty, they're on committees. And so I think both of those are just so important for making sure that diverse views and people are included. You know, I think that that improves everything from a research standpoint, from the colleagues that you get to work with, and so just to benefit overall. This has been incredible because it gave me a chance to do the research that I felt I really wanted to do. So when I got that award, I did sickle cell related research, and this really helped to foster a desire to continue to do research. To be able to have Ash invest in me the way it did all throughout to fellowship, that really allowed me to continue to think about uh, hematology and to think about the next generation. You too can contribute to these programs. Simply head over to the link on this screen to learn more. The Novartis sponsored Ask to Escalate study is currently enrolling in the United States. Ask to Escalate is a phase two dose escalation trial of Asiminib monotherapy for second and first line CML chronic phase. All patients will start treatment with Asiminib 80 mg daily and can dose escalate if not meeting response milestones. The primary endpoint is major molecular response at 12 months in second line patients. Visit the Novartis booth 2429 for more information. As the San Diego Sun sets on day one of the ASH annual meeting and exposition, the conversations continue online. We are following all of the discussions on X, formerly Twitter, and encourage you to continue using the meeting hashtag ASH23 to share your experience. We will see you on the next ASH News TV for more highlights.